Tonight, Verizon wants Netflix to pipe down. The Project Tango tablet is nearing reality, and behind Dropbox is latest stealth purchase. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 102 for Thursday, June 5th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Nature Box, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like dark cocoa nom noms. Who wouldn't want to eat those? To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. After Netflix blamed Verizon for poor streaming performance with messages that started showing up to subscribers yesterday, well, the ISP has responded to Netflix with a cease and desist order. Netflix's messages allege that Verizon and other ISPs have been hurting streaming quality on purpose to properly maintain their networks. Quote, there is no base for Netflix to assert that issues with respect to playback of any particular video session are attributable solely to the Verizon network. That's from Verizon's letter, of course. So what's the issue at hand? Well, Netflix believes that it should be the Internet provider's responsibility so that they continue providing their customers with a level of service that they advertise. Verizon and Comcast now have Netflix paying for that maintenance, however, and it doesn't really want to do that. As of now, the Federal Communications Commission has not stepped in, so no wonder why Netflix is being so noisy. Google's Advanced Technologies and Projects, which is the division behind Project Tango, announced its first piece of hardware back in February. It was a prototype smartphone that had Connect-like 3D sensors. Everybody got excited about it. Now the team is expanding the project to a tablet, 7-inch tablet, the prototype has a 1080p display, runs a stock version of Android 4.4 KitKat, plus NVIDIA's quad-core Tegra K1 chip and 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Well, let's not stop there. USB 3.0, micro HDMI, Bluetooth LE, LTE, haven't announced a carrier partner yet, but it's in there. Cameras, 3D mapping. This tablet is packed and it's also expected to go on pre-order later this month. No specific date from Google yet. Also, if you're lucky enough to be whitelisted for an invite, it's $1,024. And with that price tag, this isn't really a consumer product just yet. Okay, software developer Lepidum has uncovered another severe vulnerability in the OpenSSL cryptographic library. This just doesn't end, does it? This allows attackers to decrypt and modify web, email, and virtual private network traffic protected by the Transport Layer Security, or TLS, protocol, which is the Internet's most commonly used method for encrypting traffic that's going between a user, and servers. The advisory went on to say that servers running a version earlier than 1.0.1 should update as a precaution. Also, the vulnerability has existed since the first release of OpenSSL, which was 16 years ago. Library updates are available on the front page of the OpenSSL website. And of course, administrator servers running OpenSSL are urged to update ASAP. One year after Edward Snowden's NSA leaks, Reform Government Surveillance, that's a group backed by quite a few notable tech companies, big ones, is publishing a letter demanding that the Senate strengthen the NSA reform bill that recently passed the House. The letter is signed by the CEOs of AOL, Apple, Dropbox, Yahoo, Twitter, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and is set to be published in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Politico Tomorrow, according to the letter, in the coming weeks, the upper chamber of Congress has the, quote, opportunity to demonstrate leadership and pass a version of the USA Freedom Act that would help restore the confidence of Internet users. Earlier today, Microsoft published an additional post of its own describing how government, how the government should change surveillance methods, including bulk collection. In just a moment, I'm joined by Bloomberg's Mark Millian. We're going to talk a little bit about Dropbox's latest interesting purchase where is that company going but first let's take a moment to thank nature box another kind of box very different though <laughs> for sponsoring this episode of tn2 
you know, you, you, you want to eat right. I certainly do. I love eating right, but I don't because when you're busy and you're up against a deadline and, well, that's my life anyway. And then I get cranky and I just want to eat, 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 and I eat bad food. Don't give in, though. If you've got the good food at the ready, then you don't have to worry about snacking because you're snacking smart. Who am I talking about? Nature Box. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And then you can click on the continue button and see what all your subscription options offer you when you want to place your order. See, as a Nature Box member, you can select which snacks you want in your monthly box that gets delivered to you. And you can also filter by vegan or soy free or gluten conscious or non GMO. You've got all sorts of options plus taste options. Maybe you're a salt person, you want savory stuff. Maybe you're like me and you like the sweet stuff, but not bad stuff. It's sweet, but it's good for you. Nature Box sends these snacks right to your door, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Banana bread granola, who doesn't want that? Peppery pistachios, over 100 different kinds of snacks. They all have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial, none of that bad stuff. Nature Box is the gift that keeps on giving. You can do a three, six, or 12-month subscription for yourself or somebody that you care about. It's time to snack smarter. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with delicious treats that are healthy. South Pacific plantains, anyone? For 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Nature Box for their support of Tech News tonight. All right, let's talk about Dropbox. Mark Millian is joining us now, tech writer over at Bloomberg. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Okay, so Dropbox has bought a company called Drop Talk, which you would be forgiven for not knowing about because they've kind of been acting in stealth mode. So what does this company do? Uh, Drop Talk specializes in what appears to be talk. Uh, it seemed to be a communication company. They had they were working on a um, on an extension for a Chrome browser where I guess you could just do you know chat with friends, IM, um, do group chatting, and they were also working on apps for um, for iOS and Android. Um, and in this announcement, um, they said that you know they kind of positioned themselves as an enterprise focused company as uh, you know they said they wanted to improve the way we work um so i think that gives a hint that dropbox maybe had them in mind to work on some type of product for their dropbox for business um solution so um it would make sense you know for some type of corporate networking like a like a yammer or a skype focused on businesses it remains to be seen where the Dropbox will take this small acquisition that they've made. You know, Dropbox kind of has a history of acquiring companies. And then if you look at something like Mailbox, uh, which is the email client, besides a, some light Dropbox integration where you can add a Dropbox attachment or an attachment that's from your Dropbox account, it's mostly a standalone product. Do you think Dropbox wants to kind of keep down that same path, which I think you could you you could argue Facebook is also doing. How would something like Dropbox be integrated or Drop Talk rather integrated into something like Dropbox otherwise? It's it's confusing, right? It I is. think they probably maybe they just bought this for the branding because it sounds like a Dropbox product <laughs> because people already. People were confused was, anyway, right? Let's yeah. just buy them. <laughs> Um, yeah, Dropbox has a history, like you mentioned, with Mailbox of, um, you know, they, they bought this app, this, uh, this mail app, um, where, you know, it's a pretty cool, um, app that you might use and not even know that it had any association with Dropbox. Um, but then hidden underneath, you can plug it into your account, make it easy to upload and download files. Um, that was a little bit different because um, Mailbox had quite a bit of traction by the time they picked it up. It was still a young company, but as soon as Mailbox put out their product, um, which was uh, which was led by Gentry Underwood, who I, I think had some history designing for Apple, um, that blew up. I think it had over a million users by the time they picked it up. So yeah. they, they kept that one, and Gentry has become kind of like a design guru within Dropbox. He helped design their photo product, Carousel, Drop Talk is a little bit different. It was a smaller company. They were just beta testing. It wasn't really on the market. So uh, we don't really know whether Dropbox was doing this as an aqua hire and just wanted these talented engineers to help build something else or whether they 
intend to take what drop talk was working on and blow it out into a into a full pro like communications product you know when google drive was launched back in 2012 uh you know the it was much more attractive pricing for larger cloud storage options than Dropbox. Dropbox is pretty much held firm with its its product as far as cloud storage goes. Do you think that that's name recognition? Do you think that Dropbox can still say, well, they're, we're the cloud service that most people think of and we're not too worried about it? I mean, we've got iCloud Drive from Apple now just, just uh, announced earlier this week. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Dropbox is history has really been in consumer. It's a, a really elegant product that took off because it just exists as a folder on your computer. You, you, um, you copy stuff into it and it shows up on all your devices. Um, where they're starting to go um, very heavily now that they seem to be on a, you know, a, a huge um, growth spurts, taking on a bunch of funding and potentially on track for an IPO, they're really targeting the enterprise market because they see Box, which is also IPO bound, um, targeting enterprise and the pricing between the two is very similar. Dropbox's um, enterprise pricing is a lot more reasonable than its consumer pricing. Mm. And I think when you look at something like an iCloud Drive or even to a large extent Google Drive, those are largely consumer products and their pricing is a lot more attractive. I don't think a lot of businesses will be taking to iCloud Drive, um, so I don't think Dropbox has a lot to worry about there. But again, Dropbox... Things around as the competition gets a little more heated from, from Apple and others. One last question. We've got a lot of cloud storage services. It, it would appear maybe with a, a with a purchase of something like DropTalk that Dropbox wants to go after Box. It's <laughs> coming out. That's, that's, that's a ridiculous sentence, but you oh, know, but you know what I mean. I mean, yeah, going towards the enterprise at least distinguishes Dropbox from so many of the other quasi-free uh, cloud services. How do they all survive? Do they all survive? What's the winning model? Um, there's there's potentially room for them for them all to survive. I think Box is a lot stronger in the business world than Dropbox is right now. Um, many of the Fortune 500 companies are using Box. Um, Dropbox is still it's it's huge. A ton of people use it, but it's more of a people use it for their personal files, not so much at work. Um, as you know, other companies get into the space. I think Dropbox's strategy is to seemingly build an ecosystem of apps, Mailbox being one example, Carousel, which they had just launched very recently for photos, um, potentially Drop Talk if they end up blowing that out. Um, this seems to be their goal is to get people using as many um, apps in, in different, uh, you know, different industries, photo, um, you know, file storage, mail, um, to lock people into their ecosystem and then hopefully charge a premium. That, by the way, is also the Apple model when it comes to services and consumer electronics and software. Um, so Dropbox is taking a very different approach to Box, which is we make it affordable, we make it easy, and we got hire a ton of salespeople to go after businesses and bring on as many companies as possible. Mark Millian writes for Bloomberg Tech Writer over at Bloomberg. Thanks so much for being here, Mark, and tell people where they can keep up with your work. Uh, yeah, check out um, Bloomberg.com slash Global Tech, where we cover all of the uh, great businesses and startups and tech happening outside of Silicon Valley. Excellent. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks. All right. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to subscribe to the show, you can go to twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2. That's the number two at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until tomorrow, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.